Hey there, welcome to LSAT Demon Daily. I'm John Freeberg. I'm a substitute teacher at uh, LSAT Demon, and that's Nathan Fox. Hey, John, thanks for coming on the show. Um, just so people know, what was your LSAT score and how did you end up subbing for the LSAT Demon? Yeah, so my uh, official test was a 176, uh, and I, just a little bit after I got that score, uh, sent an email to LSAT Demon saying, hey, I want to work for you guys. So, um, and how did you decide you wanted to work for us? This is, in my opinion, the absolute best uh, LSAT prep company there is. Um, how did you, know, you form just that opinion? To I so, want to believe you. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any evidence for that claim? Um, I just looked at all the other LSAT prep companies and I did not like all the, you know, all the strategies that they taught of really just focusing on learning the names of different types of games and all that. Uh, what did just you the, do for prep? So I took my cold diagnostic in March, 2021, and then just got an LSAT uh, Demon Free account a couple of weeks after that and started studying one hour a day, six days a week. Uh, started with drills focused entirely on accuracy, not worried about time at all. Uh, and then as I progressed, I started focusing on time a little bit um, after I got the accuracy figured out and took my official test in August. One and done, 176. Yeah. Great. So you were a demon student. Did, were you ever a paid subscriber or did you do that all with just demon free? Um, yeah, I had a demon basic membership. So. Demon basic membership, $95 yeah. a month. Do one hour a day for four or five months, it sounds like you did. And yep. you were done. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Our free resources are really great. If you don't already have a demon free account, please go to lsatdemon.com and sign up for free. We give away as much content as we can possibly give away uh, there. We also have a, the basic subscription for $95 a month. I mean, you have access to like 6,000 LSAT questions with full written and video explanations for every single one of those. And you have access to the ask button, which uh, John is now a member of the team writing explanations, emailing back and forth with students who um, ask for help via the ask button. And you get all that for your uh, demon basic account. So anyway, give that a shot. Uh, we have an email here from Selena. It says, hey guys, I was curious if there were any commandments for a diversity statement that would differ from those to live by when writing a kick-ass personal statement. There's not a lot of good, reliable information floating around. So far, I know it's best not to partake in the trauma Olympics, Write about something that happened to someone else if you weren't directly affected. Get caught up in cinematic details that may be inappropriate or unnecessary to disclose in an application. Yeah, I would be really worried about sharing things that might be red flags, like oversharing bad shit about you. You know, like, oh, I had, you know, I went into a spiral of depression and anxiety. It's like, whoa, wait a second. Even if you're fully recovered, how does your spiral of depression and anxiety make me think better of you? I struggle with depression. You don't want that shit. And I like it's just not good. It's not like it's human, sure, but it's not a point in your favor. Don't overshare that shit. Anyway, beyond what not to do, I believe it was once mentioned on Thinking LSAT to use good judgment when deciding what is diverse in a time where once was sorry, where what was once unheard of or highly unique is now mainstream and commonplace. I mean, for sure, like uh, just simply being a woman, for example, does not make you diverse in law school. The majority of law school students are women. So, you know, you've got to think about what makes you actually different from a typical uh, law school student. How can applicants avoid submitting a diversity statement that isn't an extension of a personal statement filled with additional why law school hot air? If the personal statement embodies, let me show you a time I was a badass, then what is the diversity statement equivalent? Thank you, Selena. Uh, John, I'll let you have first crack at that. What do you, what do you think for Selena? Uh, first off, I think that you're asking all the right questions and thinking about this in definitely the right way of trying to um, add to your application in the best way possible and really just sell yourself to these law schools, um, trying to prove why uh, you're the best fit for them.
Yeah, so I think you're asking all the right questions, starting in absolutely the right place. I think I'll defer to Nathan on the uh, advice for writing the diversity statement. Yeah, I, I agree that I'm glad that Selena is thinking thoughtfully about this. She doesn't want to just, you know, write a second personal statement and try to shoehorn it in as a diversity statement. I think if you do that, you know, you're, you're just wasting people's time and it doesn't make you look like a very good advocate if you're just kind of rambling with, you know, if you don't answer the question that you're not, that's not going to move the needle, I don't think. My suggestion for Selena is to remember that the diversity statement is an optional statement. Why do you need one? If you're a typical, somewhat affluent, white, uh, you know, if you look a lot like most else, most law school classes, maybe just don't write a diversity statement. I mean, if you can't say something that's going to really move the needle, then you should probably just not say anything so that you can let the rest of your application shine. I think that's the most important thing that anybody can realize here with any optional question. The more you say, the more attention is going to be drawn away from the other stuff in your application. So Selena, if diversity is not the strongest part of your application, then why even direct focus to diversity? You know, like depending on what Selena walk, what Selena writes about, her diversity statement could have the exact opposite of its intended effect. Where she's, you know, like they're gonna read it and they're gonna go, oh, so you're just another white suburban affluent <laughs> applicant. Or I don't know what suburban has to do with anything, but like you're just another typical American white applicant. Like if that's the case, then writing a diversity statement, you know, I, I just think all it's going to do is draw attention to that fact. So it's optional, Selena, and silence is an acceptable response. If you do have something that makes you different, then I think you can go ahead and write about that. I would keep it short. I would respect their time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go crazy with it, but you know, I, if I was going to write a personal statement today, I would write it about my business because I think that my business is the thing that differentiates me. You know, I'm, I'm really, it, it would put my best foot forward to write about founding the, the business and running the business. I'm a white, you know, I grew up like lo lower middle class. There's a million white dudes like me in law school and so, you know, I, I certainly don't have traditional markers of diversity, but if I were going to write a diversity statement, I mean, I, I would maybe write something about, you just got to find something that's like, that's different and that positions you as different. And so, you know, maybe I would write something about like coming from a strongly Christian, um, very, very like white Protestant Christian uh, small town and family and going to college and reading books and coming out of it on the other side as an atheist. Um, I think that that does provide me a, a bit of a different perspective because I'm somebody who changed uh, a fundamental aspect of my worldview. And I think that I could maybe write intelligently about that for a paragraph. I'd have to be real careful though, not to like shit on religion or make it sound like I have the answer to life's secrets, uh, you know, the, I, which I clearly don't, but maybe I would be able to write thoughtfully about like, Hey, you know, I, I come from a red state and I now live in a blue world and it's a dramatic shift. And I, I feel like I, I have friends and family on both sides. And maybe that could be a thoughtful diversity statement. <laughs> but after I wrote it, I would strongly consider shit canning the whole thing and just not saying anything because that's a perfectly acceptable option. All right. I was talking a lot. Anything uh, you want to add to that, John? Yeah. If you've got a kick-ass personal statement, um, that's what they're going to think of you 
they're going to look back at that and that's their entire picture of you. And if you are worried that your uh, diversity statement might not be awesome, then don't include it. They want your LSAT and GPA. They're, ultimately, they want your LSAT and GPA. They want to read your personal statement and make sure that you're a productive, happy, professional person and not going to cause problems at their school. They go out of their way to say, oh, we prefer oversharing to undersharing. But that's because their incentives are just exactly opposite of yours. They, Of course, they want you to say all the bad things about your application. <laughs> the, 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 so they can deny you. Yeah, you want to let the LSAT and GPA shine as much as possible. You want to write a personal statement so that they get a, a picture of you as a happy, productive, professional person. And then when in doubt, don't be like me. Just shut the fuck up. And, you know, let them reach positive inferences about you instead of like trying so hard to force stuff with uh, optional essays that you just really don't have to do, write. Make sure to email daily at lsatdemon.com if you'd like to ask us a question or share some LSAT or law school admissions news. Thanks for listening.